Doctors and nurses at this small North Georgia hospital treat dozens of sick patients every day, but they say this boy's story is different. His name, Juan Gonzalez. He doesn't speak English. He is all alone. He is dying. Juan's wish to see his parents one last time. I adore them and love them so much. I would tell them how much I need them by my side during this difficult time. Juan's mother, father, and three siblings live more than 2,300 miles away in a small, impoverished village in Guatemala where they work on a farm. Last fall, Juan joined the nearly 12 million unauthorized immigrants living in the U.S. He traveled 15 days by train, bus, and boat, sleeping in the desert to come to Georgia to work so he could send money home to his family. I did it so they could get out of poverty. To be honest, we don't have a lot of money. I did it so they won't have to work in the fields anymore. They don't have much. Juan found work as a dishwasher, taking home $250 every week. But suddenly, last November, his heart nearly failed him. Juan's heart pumps about a fifth or 20 percent of what a normal heart would do. Dr. Frank Stegall at the Redmond Regional Medical Center in Rome says Juan suffers from dilated cardiomyopathy, which means his heart muscle is very weak. With no money or family nearby, this cardiologist says it isn't likely this teenager will receive a transplant. He is a uh, young man that has just grabbed our, our hearts. For the last seven months, he's been in and out of this hospital, and in that time, Juan's character and contagious faith have truly touched this medical team. They've reached out to Georgia Congressman Phil Gingrich to help. He released this statement to CNN. My office began facilitating communication between the Guatemalan Embassy and the State Department, who are working to get Juan's parents to their son's bedside as soon as possible. My thoughts and prayers are with this family as they face this difficult time. Pascual? We contacted Juan's parents in Guatemala. His father, Pascual, says it's been tough not being able to be by his son's side, but he understands why Juan wanted a life in America. When he first got there, we were happy because, I mean, to be honest, how we lived, we had a lot of failures in life. And now after he got sick, we're so sad. Thousands of miles away, Juan sits in this hospital bed, reading the Bible, drawing to communicate, and praying for a miracle so he can continue helping his family back home. I'll fight to the very end. I will not be defeated by this sickness.